Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part three of building Iron Spider-Man on my Robot X platform, which is a real walking, talking robot. And I've done quite a lot of development on walking in the past, and today we're gonna look at that again. So in the last two episodes of Iron Spider-Man, I made the head, which has got animatronic eyes, and it also moves around and pans and tilts, and also made the chest panels. So what we really need to do though is take away the hacky electronics I was using for testing and integrate that into my robot controller which is kind of a big universal remote, it's got loads of mode switches on. We've already controlled the arms from it so I can put it into a specific mode and move the three axis joystick around and that will control the arms. And now what I want to do is integrate the head into that as well. So that's going to be the first part of the video and in the second part we're going to come along and look at it walking again so I'm going to put some extra sensing in Hopefully we can get it up and running, whether it will walk any better. At the moment it doesn't walk at all since I've added the arms and the head and the other mass to it. So we really need to do something about that. Since I put the head on I had to remove the battery that powers the electronics and now I need somewhere else to mount it and I probably need to put another Arduino in to control all of the Spider-Man stuff. So basically I've made this plate with the Moore extruder and that's going to fit on the back. There's going to be some cable clips at the top to handle these cables. And that's going to fit on the back there so we can get the battery on and probably an Arduino Mega because it can control up to 40 servos. Right, so those are mounted on the back. The two USB plugs power the electronics on the front and the other one powers the arms at the moment. So all the five volt stuff I'm gonna splice into that to power the animatronic control Arduino as well for the Spider-Man features. And this one will control all the head at the moment so I need to wire in all the bits and pieces I had on my test rig. I've just made a breakout cable here for the servos. There's seven servos that go into the head. So three connectors there and four there for the eyes. All of the power wires are combined and those will come from this 5 volt regulator to power the servos and then all of the tails there will go off to the Arduino. Right, I've wired in most of it so we've got all those servos, at least the eyes are wired in, there's still flo some floating around for the neck because I haven't got the analogue controls on. But if I now turn on this USB pack, that should power up the Arduino, should be to see the power lights there somewhere. And if I power on the regulator here by connecting it to the battery, we should see that blue light come on. And I've got a ground wire here, so I'm still running the, la the code from last time, which is just um, the button push to operate the eyes. You can probably hear those working there as I do that. So uh, that seems to be working okay. And I can't connect the other servos because I haven't got any analog controls. At the moment, all of those would read zero and the head would go to its end stops. So before I connect those, I need to sort out the integration with the remote and the rest of the electronics. Here we are around the front again, so there's not much space here for any more electronics. I could have double stacked it, but it probably wouldn't fit under the chest plate and it would be a bit of a nightmare to get to. So we're controlling the Arduino on the back from the remaining serial TX pin on the Arduino Due on the front. Um, I know I could use software serial to communicate with more things, but we've still got one TX pin and that pretty much covers everything. You may have noticed I relocated the emergency stop there to the shoulder, so it's going to poke for a hole in the cosmetics. It is red after all, so that should be pretty good. I can always relocate it again if it's unsightly. All right, so I've now mapped the remote to operate the arms and head in, in different ways, depending on what the mode is. So mode what, uh, zero and one will be for walking. Um, we may sync the arms up with that as well. We'll see how it goes. Mode two is the original arm demo, so now my... Uh, pan tilt zoom joystick operates those axes obviously it doesn't operate the elbows it operates the rotation there when I rotate it and this is exactly as it was before if I now scroll through to mode 3 that's the head demo so it puts his arms down and now turning the joystick turns its head and moving it that way moves the head sideways and forwards and back moves it that way and if I press this button that makes his eyes blink so now we can uh, Sort of obviously use those all at once to do some sort of puppeteering and have a look at people in a different way and if we now scroll through to mode 4 it does the head and the arms so I've just mapped those values to all of those axes but um, of course we can map them in different ways so at the moment the forward and back tilt of the head rotates the arms sideways causes it to do uh, that sort of motion and I've mapped the rotation now to the elbows instead of the rotation in the upper arm. 
It's still uh, not particularly human. We probably uh, could benefit from some, from some forearms on there. So um, it doesn't look so ridiculous, but uh, when we put the forearms on, we'll probably change those mappings. So it's uh, not doing something that's so much like a disco dance and it's a bit more spidery. But uh, for now, all those things work. And of course, if I go back to one of the walking modes at the moment, the joystick does nothing. So that will eventually be uh, for edging forward for walking, sidestepping, and when I get the extra actuator fitted on the legs, that'll be for rotating on the spot. And of course, we'll have other preset buttons eventually for all this lot, which will have other pop-up things, the uh, things in the forearm, various other features that I'm planning for this character. And we could use those as well to recall specific positions. So we could have specific arm and head poses that are recalled just by a button touch, or use those as a shift key to swap over axis from the main controller. To make the robot walk again, we need to look down at its feet. So in the clips I've shown you in the last few episodes of the robot walking around, of course that's when it didn't have its arms or its head on or any of that extra mass. So now it has got those things, it doesn't work quite as well. In fact, it doesn't actually walk at all. So uh, the main thing I hadn't put on the feet was any sort of switch that tells the robot when its foot is on the floor. So it's a bit like walking with really numb legs and you can't tell where the floor is. And obviously it doesn't have any vision either. So it's basically pretty much pot luck if it works properly. So what we're gonna do is put some sort of switches or pressure pads on the feet and see how that helps. What I was gonna do was attach just a push switch to the side of the foot. And then I was gonna make these skids and I tried different thicknesses there and these are actually flexible. So the aim would be that these would be attached to the side of the foot and when it touches the ground, it presses the switch there. And this would help slide along the ground so the switch didn't get caught and uh, stop the legs moving. So uh, that seems like an okay idea. I put these kind of cutouts in so I could slide this up and down on its bolts and get the right spacing and get this at whatever angle I need. But actually I think it's gonna be a bit hit and miss and it's gonna be very hard to adjust to get that to push just at the right time. So I'd actually like something I can tune, essentially, which is force sensitive, and we can decide when that thing is triggered. So I decided to give force sensitive resistors another go after last week's exosuit video, where they didn't work as well as I thought they would. So it's basically a pad with two terminals and the resistance changes as you squash it. So I've stuck one under the uh, foot there. Now there's some rubber pads on the bottom of the feet. So I've just taken the screw out that holds the back on and just shoved it in between the metal extrusion and the ninja flex. So now you can see we've got a reading there of about 0.4K, which is about 400 ohms. And if I tip the robot backwards, it goes up about between three and four, uh, sorry, about uh, nearly 10 times in fact to 4K. So uh, that seems to work pretty well. So we should be able to determine whether the foot is at least on the ground and we can also tune the value with an analog reading to see how much it's on the ground. Right, so I've wired those four sensitive resistors in. I don't know if you can see there's actually a resistor down there on a bit of board and I've wired those as per the Adafruit four sensitive resistor wiring diagram so it makes a potential divider. I spliced into the zero and 3.3 volt wires from the pots and then just run a single wire to the top to the analog ends of the Arduino Duo. So uh, you can see here, we've got some values. We've got both uh, FSRs reading fairly similar values actually. And I've also done a threshold. So the code is here to the left. So uh, if the value is over three and a half thousand, it just triggers a switch between a one and a zero for each FSR and pumps them out to the serial terminal. So if I push the robot back and lift both the feet up, we can see those go to zeros because the value goes to lower than three and a half thousand. And as I come back at some point, they switch on. And if I tilt the robot sideways, we should get either one turning to a zero as it lifts that foot up. So it's pretty sensitive and we can calibrate those values to uh, make it work how we need to and make it more sensitive or not. I wanted to build a self-regulating system where it can at least step from foot to foot and basically doesn't fall over, of course. And I had this working pretty much before I put the extra mass on, just using those inertial measurement units. What I found as I went was that, in fact, I had to reduce the amount of the inertial measurement unit that's being used and pretty much rely on those foot pads. So it's been quite interesting that just using pressure pads in the feet, we can actually build that self-regulating system. And I found tuning that up and tuning the inertial measurement units down made it better and better as I went. And unfortunately, my algorithm's pretty simple, so I haven't actually made one which will use both those sets of sensors properly. So it probably needs revisiting in the future. 
I did find there was some sidestepping and I know the floor slopes in this room, but I found that um, basically if I adjusted the amounts of pressure that were required and the time the feet were required to be on the floor, then I could make it tread heavier on one foot and pretty much I could get rid of the sidestepping. So after some more tuning, it seemed to work pretty well. I then reactivated the arms to see what difference that would make and um, if you move them at the wrong time it does cause it to sidestep because obviously it comes down heavier on one foot than it would normally but um, it's not too bad if you try to dance with your eyes shut you're probably going to bump into someone. And with the body panels back on as well, it's pretty much alright, but it probably needs recalibrating again every time I add some mass, because obviously it is coming down heavier on the feet and that's going to affect everything, and therefore the slope in the floor is probably going to be more noticeable. Well, I've done quite a lot of walking up and down while building robots and uh, imagining how I'd lean side to side and so on, but one thing I didn't consider was the feeling in my feet, which is a bit silly really, because it actually has uh, quite a big influence on how you walk. So I probably need to forget everything I thought I knew about uh, how robots balance and really concentrate on that feeling of touch a bit more. The other issue of course is the head wobble and that's because of the servo that turns the head is actually quite loose. The gear is a bit wobbly on top because it's on the top of a servo horn so that needs tweaking at some point and that's slack taking out. I do have some more build up on the neck to do but I'm pretty happy with that. It took me about a day and a half to actually get that to walk properly um, from not working at all using those pressure pads. And that's mainly because I really didn't realise I'd have to tune down the IMUs that were maintaining stability before so much. And I really need to have a really hard think about the algorithm that's in use and how it's going to combine all of those sensors. However, it is really interesting that we can make it stable pretty much just using foot uh, force sensors. And of course, there's only one in each toe at the moment. If we had them in all four corners, we could tell whether it's overbalancing because it'd be applying pressure on the outsides more. And we could tell if it was... Uh, uh, falling over forward to back as well and um, that's really quite interesting so that's something I'm going to think about in the future. But next time we're going to come back and do some more Spider-Man cosmetics. I'm going to think about the walking algorithm and in the future a few episodes on we'll come back and try and make it walk better and better as we go through the series. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects and it's really important to say that all my projects are funded through Patreon by superfans. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards including a live stream with me all my videos early and also almost daily sneak peeks and pics of upcoming projects all right that's all for now